know the Word of God. Why believe this book? We're going to see that Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders and they just accused them of blasphemy. In John 10 30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. And when he says that, the religious leaders didn't like it. So he refers them back to Psalms 82. Because in verse uh, 35 of John 10, he says, If he called them gods, speaking about God, back in uh, Psalms, I'm going to read that in a minute, unto whom the word of God came, and scriptures cannot be broken. This is what Jesus is telling the religious leaders religious leaders that the scriptures can't be broken and there and they agree with this because in Psalms 82 verse 1 and 6 it says God standeth in the congregation of the mighty he judge he judgeth among the gods now the gods back in Psalms what he's talking about right here he's not talking about gods he's talking about human judges people who have who are in authority to judge he, he's calling them gods and in verse 6 he says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of, you, all of you are children of the Most High. So what God is saying here is they are supposed to be judges of God, but they're not. They do not reflect the concerns of God, the justice of God, the order of God. If you read chapter 82, it's a small chapter, Psalms 82, you'll see why God is telling them, you're not, you're not the right judge. You're not judging the people right. Jesus is telling them if, if they were called gods, but you're condemning me because I said I am the son of God, or he says I and my father are one, claiming to be God, and you didn't tell them that they were blasphemers. He said, why, did, why are you telling me I'm blaspheming? Jesus says to them, because they know they take the, the scriptures very seriously, which they do. The religious people, like I said, they had the... Uh, know the scriptures the first five books of the bible memorized we can't i can't do that memorize the first five books word for word i don't think so i wish i could but i can't but this is how serious they take the word of god and this is why he tells them you you know that the scriptures are not wrong so what i'm trying to point out here this the word of god is infallible it's and this is why he said in uh John 10 35 and the scriptures cannot be broken they cannot be wrong this is what they're saying what Jesus is saying they cannot be wrong and they like I said the the religious leaders even agree with that very strongly so that shows us the scriptures are infallible they have no mistakes in this in the scriptures in the Word of God second Timothy 3 16 all scripture is given by the inspiration of God all scriptures Every single thing in this in this Bible is inspired by God. If you believe this book without a doubt is the Word of God, you accept everything that's written in it. I know that's what I did. When I gave my life to the Lord, I had made up my mind at the very beginning, at the very beginning, I said, I'm going to believe everything in here. It's the Word of God. If there is mistakes in this Bible, can God hold us accountable for anything? He can't. Because if there's mistakes in here, how do we know which ones they are? Well, I did that because your word said it was okay, or I didn't do that because your word said don't, and, and you know, which ones are right, which ones are wrong. Yeah. Either you completely understand, not understand, but completely put your faith in the word of God, or don't have it at all. Because if you just leave, believe part of it, you're, 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 lo you're losing. You're losing, because we have to believe everything in here, have to, because if we don't, we might as well just put it aside and just live the way we want. Psalms 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Now, if we're going to believe everything in here, everything. So from here, all the scriptures that I read from here on, we believe them. We're going to believe them, right? And it says, the law of the Lord is perfect. The law, this is the law, the word of God is perfect. Converting souls. The testimony of the law is sure, making wise the simple. So what he's saying here is, we who are simple can understand his words. Because he makes it simple for us to understand. And he gives us more wisdom than the ones who think they're very intelligent. People out there who are, who are, who are very intelligent, but they have no wisdom because 
They, they don't accept the Lord. We have more wisdom than they do. He makes, he, makes us very, he makes it very simple for us to understand it. So simple, so simple that people who are very intelligent don't understand it. Can't receive it. And then in Psalms 119, verse 97 through 100. Oh, how I love your instructions. How many of us can say that? Tell God, oh, how I love your instructions. Amen. I can't live without them. Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. It says to meditate on the Lord day and night, right? And right here it says, I think about them all day long. I know I do. I do, partly because of this Bible study. <laughs> I'm always thinking, you know, okay, did I, did I point everything out? Blah, you know. Verse 98 says, Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. So the words of God is our constant guide. Day and night, every day, we need God's words to guide us for that day. And the next day, and, then, and so on and so on. Every day. It's not like you, you read something today and that's it. You're going to live off of that for, for the rest of your life. No, God is constantly, constantly guiding us every day. That's what walking in the Spirit is. Letting the Lord guide you every day of your life. Verse 99, Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. Now, now what he's saying here is not talking about the gift of teaching. Like, I can go to Sunday school, and I'm not bragging, but I can go to Sunday school and pretty much know more than the teachers. But he's talking about when I, when, I, when I go to my Bible teacher that I've been under for over 30 years, no, I can't say that. He's got the gift of teaching, and I am not wiser than him. I, don't, I do not understand like he does. He, he's got the gift of teaching, and I wish I could be with him all the time. Because I, I would just sit there and just listen to him. Because he knows the scriptures so well. I mean, he, he's got the gift. He's got the gift of teaching. So, right here it says, this is how we need, this is why we need to know the scriptures. And because we need to know them, it also helps us. It gives us instructions for the day, for the day every day. Psalms 119, 133, it says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So the Lord says, order my steps. Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, order my steps for the day. That's walking in the Spirit. Order my steps. You're, you're asking God, order my steps today. Let me walk in the steps you want me to walk in. Let me walk in your will. That's what it's saying. Again, how many Christians get up in the morning and say, Lord, order my steps. Show me what your will is for today. This is a day by day. We live day by day, right? The Lord said not to worry about tomorrow. He said just worry about today. And since we're just worrying about today, we don't even have to worry when we say, Lord, Order my footsteps. I want to be in your will. And if you're in his will, you're going to mess up. You might sin, but you're not going to be messed up by being in his will. And once you sin, like I said, once you sin, get right back up and say, Oh, Lord, forgive me. Because sometimes sins just come quick before we even know we've done something. And sometimes we do it and we know we're doing it. Someone cuts in front of us when we're driving. You know, We think things that we shouldn't think. I'm not going to say we say things. Maybe some of us say things, but <laughs> but we do think, ah, you know. But day by day, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. Let Him guide us. Let Him guide our steps. So when we do mess up, right there, like I said before, don't wait till the end of the night to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins for the day. Ask for forgiveness right when you hit them. Right when you do them. Because what does that say? When you're asking the Lord for forgiveness and He forgives you, from that time until you sin again, He looks at you as being perfect. Yeah. We're not going to be perfect like Jesus, but we're without, we're, we're without sin. We're born in a sin nature, but we're not committing sin until we sin again. But uh, we, need to, we need to ask for forgiveness as soon as we sin. So we can get back in. How can you walk with, uh, with the Lord if you, if you have sin? Right. So we need to ask for forgiveness as soon as we sin. Using the Word of God... Like I said, the Jewish children, children had to memorize the first five, five books of the Bible. By the time they were six years old, they already knew the five first books. 
by the time they were six years old. I'm 59 and I can't do it. Six years old. Is that, I mean, really think about that. Six year, think of a six year old you might know. Can you see them memorizing the first five books of the Bible? That's how serious the Jews were. The only thing is, they didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. Right. Other than that, they were very religious. Until you accept Jesus as, as Lord, accept Him as the Son of God, the Messiah, you're lost. You're just religious. And they were very religious. Ephesians six seventeen, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Why do we need to know the Word of God? Because that's our sword. That's what we fight the devil with. Not physically, with the Word, with God's Word. We know God says, hey, stand, I'll take care of it. But if we don't know that, how are we going to just stand there and let the Lord take care of it? Right. You know, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, a lot of people yell at the devil. Christians, when they're praying, they're like, oh, we bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus, blah, blah. I mean, they're just yelling away at the devil. When you're praying, to someone other than God, what are, you, what are you doing with that person you're praying to? You're recognizing them as a God. Because you're praying. You understand? So, when you're, even though you're yelling and screaming at them, you're still praying to them. You're praying to God at the same time, and then you go off on this rebuking the devil and all that. Well, you went from praying to God to praying to the devil. Even though it was yelling and screaming, you're still praying to him. God said the best way to fight the devil is to get closer to him. That's what he says. Get closer to me. So we need, we need the word of God. The sword of the spirit. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. And thy word is truth. So if we read the Bible, what do we read? Nothing but truth. Everything in this Bible is nothing but truth. Can we live that way? Living under nothing but truth from the Lord? Yes, we can. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, who whatsoever I have said unto you. Like I said before, man like man, men of God, when they're teaching, teachers who have the gift, when they're teaching, they're teaching by the Holy Spirit. So that's why it says, Ye, He shall teach you all things. Speaking about the Holy Spirit, well, yes. But He uses man to teach. He uses men of God to speak to us. It's the Holy Spirit. Like right now, I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to speak right now. I've surrendered to Him and said, Lord, take over. So the Holy Spirit is teaching you. Not Jesse. The Holy Spirit is. So you, that's why they have teachers who have the gift of teaching. And this is directly what it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. It says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. We need to learn to do that. We need to learn when we go to witness to someone to let the Lord take, it over, take over your mouth. Because right here he says he will. He'll take over your mouth. He'll give you the words to say. I've learned that a long time ago. I, I don't ever plan what I'm going to say to somebody. I don't plan it. I just start talking and the Lord just gives me the words. He gives me. So I know this is true. Because he's, He does it with me. I don't have a step one or step two or step three like churches teach. You know, first you, you tell them this and then you tell them. That's not from the Lord. That's not from the Holy Spirit. That's from man. Giving you step one, two, three, whatever. That's not from the Holy Spirit. And what, does, and what does the Bible say? They're drawn by the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. Right. So unless you're letting the Lord take over your mouth, you're not going to reach Him. You can witness all you want. And unless, it's, unless you're being guided by the Lord, it's not going to be there. They have to be drawn by the Spirit. And we need to learn that. Churches need to learn that. Quit having a soul winning class. Just teach the Word of God. Just like this right here, teaches the verse to them. Yeah. Depend on the Holy Spirit to give you the words to say. I gave this uh, sample one time that uh, the church I was going to at the time, they were having a soul winning class and I didn't go. And the pastor was surprised I didn't go. I told him why I didn't go because of this. You know, I let the Holy Spirit teach me. 
And he said to me, well, some of us can't do that. Oh, well, that's not a good answer. I mean, that's what he said was not good. Especially the pastor. Yeah, yeah, really. So this girl who took that class, which I saw a month or two months later, she came up to me and she said, you know, I went to that soul winning class and I was witnessing to this, to this person and I was doing the steps and she said, I just didn't feel right. I just, I wanted to say something else, but I, I went by the steps and I told her, I said, listen to me. That was the Holy Spirit wanting you to say something else. That was the Holy Spirit. I said, don't ever put what man has taught you over what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Don't ever do that. We need to learn that. If you learned it in the church, it's not perfect. You learn it from the Word of God, then it's perfect. So when you witness, let the Holy Spirit just... Don't be scared like, ah, I don't know what to say. Well, surrender to the Holy Spirit. He will give you the words to say. Amen. And a lot of people, they're scared to witness because they, they're scared they're not going to say the right things. Well, if they're in the flesh, I'd be scared too. But if they're in the Spirit, they have nothing to worry about. God will take over their mouth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly, teachers. He puts teachers in the church. He gives men the gift of teaching. Just like he gives men the gift of, of being a prophet. All these are gifts from God. But he gives, give, he, sorry, he gives certain men gifts of teaching. You can study on your own. Okay, You can study on your own. Growing will be a little slow because you're studying on your own. But if you have a teacher, you grow quicker more more food is being fed into you like I have a brother he doesn't go to church he's a Christian but he doesn't go to church he just studies by himself well you know he wants to act like he knows as much as, as much as me but a lot of times I have to correct him on what he's saying because he's, he's he's studying on his own and like I said I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it it's just if you when you do it that way you're just gonna grow slowly you will grow, but it'll be slowly. If you have a teacher, that's why God made teachers. So we can get the Word of God. I'm not saying to hurry up and do it, but it's a, it's a quicker way to grow, to get more knowledgeable and understanding on the Bible, on, on the Word. One of the main reasons we need to know the Word of God, main reason, is because there's false prophets out there. Them false prophets... They look like Christians, they act like Christians, they talk like Christians. I mean, they, they're they exact exact copy of a godly man. Exact copy. Just like in Moses' times when he, when he threw his staff down, it turned to a snake, and the magicians there threw their staffs down, and it turned to snakes also. So, false prophets, false teachers can, do, can look and act like just like us. So that's why we need to know the Word of God. Paul's speaking here and he's telling them there will be men out there who will say things like preachers say. Oh, that sounds like a preacher. I mean, listen to him. He's using the scriptures. Well, I taught you the other night. Satan knew the scriptures. Satan quoted the scriptures to Jesus when he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. So you can't go by, oh, well, look, he knows the scriptures. You can't go by that. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15 these people are false prophets. Paul's speaking about these, these false prophets. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as prophets of Christ. But I'm not surprised even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He can do that. You know why? Because Satan was the prettiest angel in heaven. That's what I'm saying. Devil, don't think of horns, a fork. That's not the devil. That's the world crazy way of describing the devil. The real devil, it was the most beautiful angel in heaven. In verse 15, So it was no wonder that his servants also disguised themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. This is why we need to know the word of God. Because they are disguised. They look just like the servants of God. Just like it. They sound like it. And unless we know the scriptures, we will be fooled. We will be. That's why it's so important that we study. We study the Word of God. Have a preacher, have a teacher, and study. You need all three of them. Because the devil and his demons are disguised as, as angels, as preachers. 
If it were, the Bible says, if it were possible, even the very elect would be fooled. That's us. We can be fooled. So we need to know the Word of God. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 1-6, through 6, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. Many. There are many false prophets in the world. In fact, I wouldn't doubt if there's more false prophets in the world than men of God these days. Christianity is, 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 is dwindling down. There's not really that many born-again Christians. Verse 2, this is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. What it's saying there is there we have Antichrists now. Not the Antichrist, but we do have Antichrists now. The, the, the Antichrist who's going to proclaim to be God in the tribulation, I, I, I'm, I say he's not here. I don't know if he's here. Because I, I, don't, I don't know when the rapture is going to be. I don't know when the tribulation is going to start. So the, the, the Antichrist could be here already. But if he isn't, they do have little Antichrists that are out there. Verse 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a, <clears throat> a victory over those people. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world. Those antichrists, those false prophets, false teachers, they belong to this world. Why? Because they're wicked. They're not truly giving you the true word of God. So they are wicked. Just like the world's wicked. So they speak from the world's viewpoint. And the world listens to them. Now, I'm going to give you an example. My daughter, when things happen to her, she believes that she has a guardian angel. And this guardian angel is her oldest sister who's already in heaven. She really believes that her sister watches over her. And I've told her, that's a lie. That's a viewpoint of the world. That's the way the world thinks. And I told her, I said, there is no guardian angels. There's only one who watches over you. And that's the Lord. That's it. There's nobody who dies here on earth goes up in heaven and they're looking down at us when they leave here that's it they don't see us anymore heaven has no sadness has no tears there is none of that in heaven now if they could come if they could look down here and see us you don't think they would be sad especially if we're not walking with the lord especially if we're lost and they know we're lost and we're not going to make it you don't think it would bring tears to their eyes make them sad that's why they can't see us and that's why there's no sadness or tears in heaven because they cannot see us. But you have views of the world, like my daughter, who think they have guardian angels or they think they have people who've died and now they're looking down on them. That's a lie from the devil. Verse 6, But we belong to God and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Now there are angels and they do have angels that watch over us. But people look at those guardian angels like my daughter. My, oh, that my sister is watching over me. Or, or other people who say, well, my grandmother passed away, but she's watching over like me. Specific yeah, person. they have specific persons that they know, and they're like, oh, they're watching over me. No, you are being watched, but it's not by them. Now, I might offend some people here, but I listen to Joel Osteen. For, for a few times now just to see what he preaches he doesn't preach hardly any about Jesus most of his preaching what I've heard is prosperity that's all he teaches is prosperity you can have you can have and you can have listen to his teachings and you hardly hear him, hear him say anything about Jesus but that makes people happy that's why he has such a big church because he, he says things that people like to hear so he has a big church. But I'm sorry. And like I said, I might make some people mad out there. But he's a false teacher. He's a wolf. 
Because a real man of God, will, he will point everything to Jesus. No matter what he, he's preaching on, everything will be pointed to Jesus. He doesn't do that. Very popular preacher, very popular, very big church. That's why I said in one of my teachings, usually a church that's very big is not a church of God. So if I get any phone calls from whoever, sorry. He doesn't preach salvation. He doesn't preach salvation. So I, I mean, I, I purposely listened to him a few times already. And this is all I got from him. How we can prosper. Period. Well, tell that to the disciples. Which most of them died of a, of a horrible death. Tell that to John who lived in the wilderness and ate locusts. These were, these were godly men. Tell them that. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So he's saying, even though they had them back then, he says, they're, they're even here now. They're going to be here among us also. So we have to beware. Beware. Because they will lead you astray. No if, answer, buts about it. If you don't know the word of God, they will lead you astray. Matthew chapter 7 Verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. So these, these false prophets, like I said, they look just like Christians. They're in sheep's clothing, Christians. Look just like Christians, but they're raven wolves. Why do they call them raven wolves? Because all they want for you is destruction. That's it. They want your money, and they don't care what happens to you. That's why you need to check me out. I've always said that. Check me out. Check out the scriptures I gave you. Check them out. I don't think you're going to have a wolf stand up here and say, Beware of wolves, if I was a wolf. You know? <laughs> but I always said, Check me out. Check, because I gave you all the verses. Go home, check them out. You need to check them out. Now, there is a difference between a false teacher and a teacher who might make a stake in his teaching. You know, if I, like the other night, I made a mistake when I said something. Well, the next teaching I corrected it but I did make a mistake on something I said that doesn't make me a, a, a wolf even though the Lord uses me to teach sometimes I might misunderstand something and give it the wrong way but that doesn't make me a wolf okay so don't get confused men of God can can misinterpret the verse but then like with me the Lord showed me that I did and I corrected it but that's not a, that's not a wolf a wolf totally takes the scriptures out of context to fit him, to help him, to be popular, to bring in money. He uses the scriptures for his own benefits. The Bible was written for you and for me and for the preachers and for the teachers. A lot of people look at it, well, you know, the preacher and the teachers, they're the ones who have to study and, and teach us. No, the Bible was written for every one of us who are Christians. It was not written just for me. It was not written just for the preachers. It was written for all of us to read. All of us. And the Bible is not hard to read. Some people make it complicated. When they're teaching, they make it complicated. Like, you know, if you look at this scripture this way and turn it that way, you'll see that it says blah, blah, blah. No, the scriptures are simple. Very simple. Now, as when we're babies, yes, they're hard to understand. But that's why we need to grow. The more you grow, the more understanding they become. The Bible says you got to get off the milk and onto meat. Most Christians live on milk. Most of them do. And you might be saying, you know, why you keep downing the Christians? Because the shoe fits. That's why. I see it all the time. I mean, we, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish Christians would have the hunger for God's Word. I wish they were hungry for it. But there's very few who are hungry for the Word of God. Very few. In fact, I hardly see any. I see very few Christians who are hungry. A Christian who is hungry for the Lord is a Christian who walks with the Lord. And when a, and I see a, a, a person, mainly a man, who is hungry and is walking with the Lord, if I need prayer, that's who I'm going to. I'm not going to a, a brother who I know is a Christian, but I know he's not walking, you know, he's not hungry for the Word. He's not really, he's kind of, he's a Christian, but he's kind of like religious. He goes to church and that's about it. I'm not going to ask that brother to pray for me. I'll ask a man that I know who is walking with the Lord to pray for me. Because I know God hears his prayer. I mean, I wish 
Christians were that way, but they're not. Not only do we need to read the Bible, understand the Bible, we need to learn how to read the Bible. Just read the Bible, and He'll answer our questions. Whatever questions we might have, I'm not saying He'll answer it right away, but He will answer it. When you're reading a, a verse in the Bible, and I'm going to give you an example here, like John 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. You're like, oh, I don't understand that. Well, if you keep reading, verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And if you keep on reading, you'll see that that was Jesus. But you've got to keep reading. I mean, you, you stop here and you're like, okay, I don't understand it. Well, just keep reading it. Just keep reading. It might be verses down the way. It might be chapters down the way. But just keep reading. Keep that in your mind, okay? This is a question I have. Write it down if you have to. But God will answer that question. Either in the same, same chapter, it might be in another book. But He will answer that question. We need to learn how to read. And not only that, it's uh, in John 4.10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you the living water. So what's the question here? Jesus, Jesus says, I'll give you living water. So your question in your mind should be, living water. What's living water? Well, it's not. In, this is chapter 4. It's not until chapter 7. Chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, of living water. So what was Jesus saying back there? I'll give you living water. And what's living water? Jesus, the Word of God. Verse 39 it says, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Well see, it was three three chapters later before you you knew who what living water was. That's why we gotta keep on reading. Sometimes you come across something and the answer was already given to you. So it might be more further down the way when you're reading or it might have been answered at the, uh, further up. Like in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 39 and 20. 29. What did I say? 39. 39. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 29 and 30. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead raise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Who is the they? They're saying, else what shall they? Do we know what they is? That should be a question. If you don't remember, that should be a question. Well, okay, who are we talking about? Who, who's the they? And also in the next verse it says, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Who's the we? We have a day and we have a we. Well, we'll see. Paul is the one who wrote, who wrote this book. So the we is Paul. We. We. That's Paul. Paul and his, his believers. His, his disciples. We're. We're the ones. Speaking of, it's speaking of Christians here. But if you back up, you'll see that the day is back in chapter 14. In chapter 14, verse 36, it says, Or do you think God's word origin, originated with you Corinthians? So he's talking to Corinthians. The day is Corinthians. So back here in chapter 14, okay, he said Corinthians. So this, these verses are talking about the Corinthians now. It's talking about the Corinthians. So, the, so reading the Bible, is, that's part of a way to understand that. Remember, always ask yourself, who is we? Or who is they? Or who is he? Because when it says in he, you got to know who the he is. Who is he talking to? we got to understand the chapter or even the book, who is he speaking to? That's why you have different religions. I'll give you another example. Matthews, in the book of Matthews, I think it's chapter 24. It says, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. So what's that sound like? Sounds like we have to endure to the end if we want to be saved, right? 
I mean, when I first read that, that's what I thought. I was a baby Christian, and that's what I thought. Uh, and I was a Baptist, and, and I heard, once saved, always saved. And I read that verse, I'm like, how can they say that? Right here it says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Well, I just kept growing. It wasn't until much later that I realized uh, Matthew chapter 24 is talking about tribulation. I didn't know that. So this chapter was speaking about people in the tribulation. So that verse goes for those. It does not for us. It's for the people in the tribulation. Tribulations, if they endure to the end, they'll be saved. If they don't take the mark of the beast and they endure for those seven years, they will be saved. So you see what I'm talking about? Just don't look at one verse. You gotta understand what that verse is talking about in that chapter. And like I said, this is why you have different religions. They use that as, hey, you can lose your salvation because right here it says you have to endure to the end. And if you don't know the Bible, someone says that to you, shows you, shows you the verse, shows you a verse in the Bible and you're like, oh man, you're right. But they're not. Because they didn't read. They didn't explain the chap the chapter to you, or they they don't even know it. Someone told them that, and now that's what they're teaching. But that's why we need to know the Word of God. We need to know. If someone comes up to me and says that to me, you can lose your salvation because Matthew's in Matthew twenty four it says blah blah blah. I can tell them, uh, -uh. no. I said if you read the whole chapter, it's talking about people in the tribulation. But if I didn't know that. I'd have to agree with him because he gave me the scriptures, right? right. I mean, am I going to go against the scriptures? <laughs> no. But I'm able to at that time because I know the scriptures. Right. So that's why we need to know the scriptures. Okay, Matthew 7, verses 21 through 29. It says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now this is back on wolves. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will. Doeth. That, that means continually. He that continually walks with me is what it's saying. The will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? If you're a Pentecostal, and you do these things, Lord, Lord, but then you go back into the world, you lost your salvation. According to them, you can lose it. Okay, according to them. Right here it shows, well, he didn't last to the end, and they believe you can lose your salvation, so he didn't make it. We call him Lord, Lord. I mean, the Pentecostals who did that, I mean, uh, we praise the Lord, we spoke in tongues. Now, you know how many people are speaking in tongues that are not speaking in tongues? I know it for a fact because I had a preacher and a deacon try to teach me how to speak in tongues. Teach me. And I stopped them. I said, wait, wait, wait. And I finally realized what they were doing. And I told them, I said, look, when I speak in tongues, it's going to come from God. It's not going to be from you teaching me. Not from the Spirit. I mean, if it's from the Spirit, you can't. If it comes from the Spirit, it's not being taught. But these men, and then this is a preacher and a deacon. Now, in that church, I can manage how many people believe they're speaking in tongues. I mean, if I would have kept on doing what they were saying to do, blah, 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 faster and faster, of course it would have sounded all jumbly, you know, and then, then I would have thought, oh, I can speak in tongues, because I didn't know. And there's a lot of people like that. Right. They're speaking in tongues, but they're not really speaking in the tongues of God. And those are going to be people who are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? Verse, verse 23, and then what I profess unto them, I never knew you. He didn't say, I once knew you. I, he didn't say, I want you knew you were saved at one time, but then you lost it. He didn't say that. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How many of us want to hear the word from God, from God, when he says, depart from me? Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I sure wouldn't want to ever hear those words. Yeah. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, like I said in verse 21, continually, continually walking with the Lord. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 
the rock. You can go through trials and tribulations. You can go through all the storms. But you are going to stand. If you're standing on the rock. Verse 26. And everyone that hears these things of mine and doeth them not. Shall be likened unto a foolish man. People who don't live by the word of God. This is what the Lord thinks of them. They're foolish. This is what he calls them right here. They're foolish. Which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended. And the floods came. And the winds blew. And beat upon that house. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. Great. It was, it's going to be a great fall. Because that great fall is hell. The lake of fire. So I would say yes. That is a great fall. These are the things... We need to learn. These are the things we need to do. We need to build our house on the rock. And what's the rock? This. The Bible. The Word of God. This is the rock. Don't go by what men tell you. Study the Word yourself. And if you are under a teacher, check him out. Check him out. Then you can say, okay, he's a man of God. Because what he says goes with the Word. Goes with the Bible. And when the tribulations come, when the trials come, when the storms come, you're standing. We're going to stand. There's many places in the Bible that says where we stand. The Lord will protect us. He will be our shield. Amen. That is a great comfort for Christians. Amen. Matthew 5.45 That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. This is why we need to be in the Word of God. So he can strengthen us. So when it does rain on us, when the storm does come, because he said it's going to come. He says, it rains on the just, Christians, and it rains on the unjust, lost. So God never said, nothing's ever going to happen to you. I'm going to keep the storms away from you. He never said that. He rains on both. The difference is, we have God to protect us. We go through the storm, but as long as our eyes are on him, he will protect us. I mean, Christians. some Christians are like, why is God letting that happen to me? I'm a Christian. Hello, it rains on the just and the unjust. That's the word of God. Verse 28, And it came to pass, when Jesus had entered these scenes, ended these scenes, the people were astonished at his doctrines. They were astonished at his words. Did it, does it say signs? His words. You got a lot of people who are looking for signs. I believe if God, if God shows me a sign. No, these people... They were astonished at his word, at his doctrine. The Bible plainly says a wicked generation seeks after a sign. So if someone says to you, you know, I'll believe when, if God show me a sign, he's for real. Uh, hey dude, you're wicked. I mean, that's the word of God. He says a wicked generation seeks a sign. So do I have the right to call him wicked? God does. I learned from my Lord. It's not very popular. But it's the truth, just like religious leaders. Religious leaders. Jesus called them hypocrites. Right. So if I call a religious a wolf, a religious leader, someone who doesn't accept the word of God because they're teaching something else, I can say, you're a hypocrite. And people say, well, you know, you shouldn't judge. Uh, who said that? You read that one verse that said, judge not that you be not judged. Yeah. That's what it says. But... If you keep reading, like I said, you got to keep reading. You can't just stop right there. How, what, see what it says right here? Well, read the next verses. God says, but if you do judge, make sure you're not judging them for something you're doing. So we can judge. God said, but don't do it this way. But people just stop right there. See what I'm talking about? They just take one verse. We need to learn what these verses mean. That's what we need to do. We need to read and study so we can say, hey, uh, yeah, it does say that. You're right. It does say that. But the next verse says, God says, if you do, make sure that whatever you're judging them for is not in your life. Take the, take the beam out of your eye before you try to take a speck out of somebody else's eye. That's what he's saying. But he's not saying, no, we can't judge. Because we can't. But there's a right way of doing it. Verse 29 for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. We have authority when we're teaching and preaching in the Spirit. We have authority because the Spirit is the one teaching or preaching. We have authority when we allow the Spirit to teach or preach through us. We have authority. 
but it says not as the scribes which were religious leaders through all my Bible studies I probably can count on one hand and I've been doing this for years I probably can count on one hand how many times I said this is what I think I don't really like doing that at all because nobody I don't want to know what people think and if I don't know if I don't want to know what people think I'm sure they want to know what I think so don't be like the scribes know the Word of God teach preach in the spirit witness in the spirit it says not as the scribes meaning like I said meaning that's what they were religious men Matthews 15 3 why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition this is Jesus speaking to the religious leaders why do you sin against the commandments of God by your traditions that mark 7 8 for laying aside the commandments of God you hold traditions of men they're ignoring the commandments of God to hold their traditions in the church. Believe me, the churches have a lot of traditions. Mark 7, 9. Full well ye rejected the commandments of God, that you may keep your own traditions. People put their traditions before the Lord. They are more loyal to their church than they are the Lord. I mean, this is the words of God here. God is saying this. Jesus is saying this is what's happening. Mark 7, 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions. Just like I said a while ago uh, about witnessing. Going to step one, step two, step... Because of that, it's going to be no effect to others. Because it's not in the spirit. It makes God's word none effect, it says right here. So how do we want to build our foundation? On the word of God? After we're all we've read? The only way we're going to do that is reading and studying the word of God. That's it. That's why so many Christians are failing, are weak, and they're affecting the rest of us because other people see that in them, and they're like, well, if they're a Christian, why would I be a Christian? Look look what they're doing or what they're not doing, or you know, stuff like that. If you're a strong Christian walking with the Lord full of joy because you have peace and rest in, in Him and you're standing in Him, that's what people are going to see, and that's, what, that's when they're going to go, I want what He has. He just lost his job, but look at him. It's like nothing happened. That's because we know if we lost our job, God's going to get it. If it wasn't our fault, God's going to get us another one. Amen. Amen. We need to know, the, that is so important, that we know the Word of God. Because one, the Antichrist, the false teachers, false prophets are not going to get to us. They cannot get to us because we know the Word of God. Then we know, we're going to know how to build our house. We're going to have a strong foundation. I mean, there's nothing but benefits for studying the Word of God. Nothing but benefits. And nothing but a whole lot of failure for those who don't study. They will be deceived. And they are being deceived.